um, viral questions, if you have a really good one and it's one that somebody hasn't really engaged with before, or, or if it's something that it's just been a while since they engaged with one like that, people will engage with it because it's fun, it's entertaining, it's easy to answer, and um, it can help you get high visibility really fast. You go into a 40,000 member group, you drop a viral question, um, all of a sudden you have like 100 to 300 comments. And it's like for people who have posted stuff before and then gotten crickets on their posts, they go post these viral questions and suddenly it's like, wow, I'm popular. Welcome everybody. You are listening to the Omni Channel podcast, a podcast from digital marketers to digital marketers. I'm your host, Dominique Caldegrand, and my mission is to help fellow marketers and entrepreneurs to grow their businesses online. So buckle up and let's get started. I'm so, so happy to have you here. Um, tell me about a bit about your origin story before we get into the meat and potatoes of the subject, which is about community building, groups, and also being your voice heard. Like, I love that idea that you do that. So just tell me a bit more about yourself. How did you get into this marketing space? And just like all of that, I want to hear everything. Uh, yeah, so I actually, um, I started helping out with community building and um, just like being on being on teams. When I was a teenager, I interned, I think I started interning when I was 13 years old, I wanted to do it at 12, but my parents wouldn't let me. Um, but I started interning at a camp over the summer, and I would go away for about a month, and I would just be helping out on the team. They'd have, like, all of these campers come in during the summer, like, hundreds and hundreds of people. Um, I, I say hundreds. I mean thousands. Thousands of people would come in um, for one camp, and I was on the team that would help out with, like, the events, with coordinating, with, you know, managing teams. I, I was able to, over the years that I worked there, I was able to um, actually, you know, become, like, a leader in several capacities while I was out there. And I worked closely with other leaders that were managing and operating this. And then um, I started helping out with, uh, with churches. And we started doing, after I, turned, after I turned 18, that's when I got married. I've been married for 17 years. Um, don't do the math. You don't need to know. Um. <laughs> you look super young. I don't know. I don't know how old are you, but you, I'm 28. I look 14, but you, I don't know, but you look super young. So just sorry. Well, for thank you. That. Thank you. Um, but when I was 18, uh, my husband and I got married and we started helping out with local church plants where these new churches were starting in local areas. And we had to figure out like, how are they going to get involved in the community? How are they going to build up their audience? How are they going to get people through the doors and make people want to stay? So we did that for a while. Um, we helped with multiple church launches. Um, then I started working with a few local organizations. Uh, we actually started our own business for a while and I started helping out with the marketing side for our business. It was all organic marketing. So so for, it was for a construction business, local organic marketing. Um, so there was a lot of like door to door and word of mouth and networking and cold calling and stuff like that. So it was all just like kind of organic stuff. Um, about 13 years ago, I transitioned into the online world and um, there was a website at the time called Cafe Mom. And um, I'm a mom, so I have five kids. So it was when my 13 year old was a baby. Um, he's not my oldest. I do have an older one who's 15, but um, but yeah, on Cafe Mom, I was admin over multiple different communities there. And in those communities, what I started recognizing was very similar to what would happen in person, where you'd have one, one kind of topical group or whatever that would grow into the thousands. You'd have a group with the exact same name. Everything else was the same about it. But for whatever reason, it just always stayed small and people didn't really engage inside of it. And so I started studying, like, what are these engagement principles? What makes people engage online? And I started recognizing that it was the same as what's happening in person. And so that really got me into community engagement strategy. I mean, I'd always kind of done it and I've always been in a position where I was working with that, but then I actually started leveraging it for multiple local organizations, for um, online communities and stuff like that. And so uh, three years ago is when I actually jumped into doing it on Facebook and I helped out the very first group that I really helped to grow and monetize was a local community um, that was based in Texas and it was a women entrepreneurs group. 
And so um, we we had that community within within one month. We had actual active engagement from every single member inside the group, like 100% engagement. Uh, within three months, we had. Um, we'd grown it to more than 500 local people who were actually showing up to events um, in that very first month, already monetizing with a few small events and stuff like that, where people were coming out, they were so excited about it, they were learning different things. Um, and then by the time that I took a step back, I left a big marketing strategy in place that they implemented very slowly over the next year, um, but they ended up having a $30,000 launch whenever they did the um, mm -hmm. It was on a low ticket offer, a membership offer, and they had a $30,000 launch whenever they launched their yearly membership. So it was pretty cool. Yeah, that's freaking impressive. So what about what you what are you doing currently? Like, is this something that you're currently doing and you still have business owners that you help building the communities, right? And monetizing yes. as well. <laughs> yeah. So um, the way that I like to the way that I like to frame it is kind of like, um, have you ever been inside of a Facebook group that's either spammy or dead or only the admins are actually getting any real engagement from members? Yes, yes. <laughs> of course. <laughs> <laughs> well, OK, there, so let's just like the, take a step back for a second. There's more than 280 million Facebook groups, so it's really common to see that um, if, if somebody is listening and they've never been inside of a Facebook group and seen that um, it's more common than they think. Um, but that being said, if you go into those groups, like that's what I love doing. I love going into a dead group. I, I call it raising raising from the dead. I love raising a dead group. Um, I love bringing back life and engagement around certain things. And I, I love to make the community such a wonderful place that people never want to leave. They actually enjoy being sold to and they love bringing in more people like them. So it's like, imagine if you just had a super fan clone factory, that's essentially what we're building. That's super impressive and amazing. Um, I'm going to ask you this question, but I think it's going to be just like, so what do you think it takes to build a community like that? I think it's just like your golden ticket. Just don't just give us as much as you can. And then the rest um, is going to be probably in your program or whatever. But well, I mean, you don't you don't have enough time. <laughs> you don't have enough time to hear to hear my entire of everything. But um, essentially what we do is um, I created a strategy. I call it the C5 strategy. And what it's built on is we have a foundation. Um, it's kind of like the way that I view my life. Like I, I I'm a Christian. And if anyone else is or isn't, doesn't matter to me. It's your choice. I believe in freedom of choice. Um, but that that's just the way I was raised. It was in, and I like it. So I'm a Christian and being a Christian is not like something that I do as a task in my life. It's just the foundation of everything that I do. Mm -hmm. So when I make decisions in life, I do that as with that as my foundation. Mm -hmm. So when we're going into groups, what we do is we actually have the foundation of a deep resonating reason of why the group exists in the first place. Because at the end of the day, um, people don't People don't buy products, they don't buy solutions, they don't buy results, they buy from people and it's typically a really emotional decision. And so we want, we don't wanna just create like, um, one of the people that I'm JV partnered with, he has one of the biggest groups on Facebook, it's um, 1.2 million members and it's a keto group. And we don't just wanna create another keto group because there's thousands of options for keto groups because then all we're doing is we're saying, hey, I'm competition for this. And I mean, granted, somebody can, you can go out there, create a keto group today. It'll probably blow up and get like, you know, five, 10, 15, 40,000 members, something, something pretty big. And you can get like a little tiny slice of it. But if you're actually wanting your voice to be heard and you want more people to find you and you want to become an expert in your field with a huge like following of super fans, then you need to have a deep resonating reason of why people should choose you over the thousands of other groups out there. And so um, I sit down and I go through a process with all of my clients. I call it the diagnosis call and we get down to the deep resonating reason. I, I have a very specific method that I use for that. Um, and it's, it's funny because my clients actually tell me they're like, this was worth the entire price I paid for you because we get down, we get down and we, we go deep. And um, 
to give you an example of what that looks like, one of my clients, he actually, um, he helps contractors, which is really cool because we had a construction business so long ago, but he helps contractors and he basically builds, helps them build out their marketing system. So they get like their website built, they do ads for them, they help them start to generate leads and traction and stuff like that. Um, but you know, there's, there's thousands of marketers out there. So why do people choose him over the competition? Well, when we went through that deep dive exercise, what we found out is we got back to this reason of when he was a kid, he would go on stage or not on stage, but um, <laughs> in his classroom where it feels like a stage as a child. And he would start to present a project. And whenever he would present that project, like he was, he'd worked really hard on it. He's like, he was so excited to present it. If he had brought all the data, he did all the work the right way. He was just expecting like, you know, Hey, I'm going to get an A on this. Cause I, I put so much time and effort into it. But then what he found was that the other students in the class were kind of making fun of him a little bit, maybe laughing at him. Um, his teacher started questioning him and just had like a bunch of questions and like it put him on the spot and he just really didn't like being questioned. And what we realized during that call was that in the contracting world, it has become a very common thing for contractors to get price shopped where just if you were gonna get a contractor to paint your house or to you know, fix some drywall or to you know, remodel your kitchen, it is common practice to get three contractors to come out and give you estimates and then choose one of them. And that's just a normal thing that everyone like here in America does. And so we connected that back to his story of being questioned as a child. And one of his deep resonating reasons is he doesn't want contractors to be price shopped anymore, the ones that he works with. He wants people to love them so much right from the beginning that nobody else is even an option. And that's what essentially what he helps them do. And if you saw like now he's like, his whole team is like, they're talking about how they're helping these contractors build out legacies and stuff like that. And so it's like, it's not just, a normal contracting group. There's a lot of contractors groups out there. In his group, they're actually teaching people to build legacies. They're making their marketing so good that they'll never be price shopped again. Like it's it's pretty incredible what he's doing. And he he exploded. So he came to me, he was doing he was already doing 100 k months. Like he was doing amazing in his business. Um, and then it actually happened uh, in February of last year that his ads got shut down. So he was his business was completely dependent on ads. When he came to me, we started building up his group. And when his ads got shut down, he only had like 500 members inside of his group. But because his group was so highly engaged, when his ads got shut down, they still hit 178,000 that month with a group of less than 500. Like that's just, wow. it's just like, it's so cool. It's so cool because yeah. people, people always think you have to have tons of volume to make lots of money. And that's just not true. Yeah. It's just not true. If you have a highly engaged group where people love you so much that you're top of mind, like you'll, you'll be able to go far above and beyond that. I love how you talk about foundations and how you really dig deep within and try to almost like grab that essence of a person that makes them yeah. unique and just yeah. turn it into a business that it's just irresistible. That is just something that there's nothing like it, right? The uniqueness yeah. sells in this aspect. My question back to you is, obviously, first of all, what do you think about how the online digital space pace is shifting because obviously Facebook has just like you said your ad account is banned you're basically fucked uh, I mean you can quit <laughs> one but like it's a tricky thing right to be relying on yeah. one single revenue source so just do you mind telling your listeners why do you think groups are a great way to sell in your business or just grow your business in general well so so going back to my past I didn't start on Facebook with groups. I started on Cafe Mom, which as soon as Facebook groups came, became a thing, our group actually transitioned over to Facebook. It didn't do very well and it kind of fizzled a little bit. Um, Facebook groups in the very beginning were really terrible and they've grown to be something beautiful. And the reason why I suggest Facebook Facebook groups right now is because there's 2.8 billion with a B, billion with a B daily active users on Facebook. So if there's 2.8 billion people, it means you have lots of abundance and this is where most everybody is. It's like a common, it's a very common thing all over the world to use Facebook. 
you won't find another platform that even comes close to that. The closest one is actually Instagram. And I think that they have like around like 1.7, 1.8 billion, but it's like, that's a whole 1 billion less. <laughs> And Instagram is also owned by Facebook, but they don't even have the community aspect. Um, I think LinkedIn has tried to do communities, but it's kind of failed. There's also a few other ones. There's, um, there's Circle and then there's, oh my gosh, it starts with an M and my brain is just blanking. Um, there's a few other platforms that are trying to build communities. But the, the thing is, is that the way that the algorithm works on Facebook, people are actually being drawn back into the platform and it's in Facebook's best interest to keep people there. Mm -hmm. So Facebook does a lot of the work for you. Whereas on any other platform, you have to do the work to get them to want to check in. Facebook is going to do that work for you. They've already put in automations and mechanisms and the algorithm is built to show your group to them. So if your group is engaged and people actually like it, you're going to get feedback so much faster on Facebook than you will anywhere else. That's amazing. Um... I love those tips as well that you said, but um, when, when it comes to a group, obviously, um, what I see, first of all, there's a lot of groups, just like you said, it's, there's so many, there's so many options. I mean, many cat groups. And what I see is um, if I don't visit a group often, it just doesn't pop up on my feed anymore. So whenever I'm much more engaged or commenting or replying in groups, those are just full of my newsfeed, but I joined many groups that are just dead in an aspect because I don't visit them. So it's, it's, they're not on my wall. So how do we build something from the get-go? That is just something that I'm going to go back to the first question. The second question is there are many times when I join a group, I don't see much, you know, outside there is like a private group. I don't see inside what, how do I know that's the group that I want to be in? Okay. Um, well, first off, I would just join groups. And if you get in there and you don't like it, you can just leave. It's that easy. It's like the same thing. Like people are afraid whenever they're first building up their friends list on a platform, they're afraid to just add anybody as a friend. And it's like, dude, just add them. It is so easy. Like what it, if you absolutely hate them, like there's even a block feature that you can use later. <laughs> yeah. It's like, it's really not that big of a deal. So, um, in terms of like joining groups, join whichever ones, um, one of the things that I use whenever I'm looking at groups that I want to join and I want to spend time in is I'll look and see how many posts were posted in the last 30 mm -hmm. days. Like they, they give that little feature on there to where you can see it and you can see if a group's active, if a group is active, yeah, I'm going to go check it out. If it's not active at all, I'm definitely not going to go in there unless the admin reaches out to me for help and ask me to help them raise their group from the dead, in which case I'm happy to, <laughs> but, um, but as far as, as far as starting a group, um, there's always like, keep in mind, there's always going to be a ton of traction at the beginning of a launch. And so a lot of groups will have good traction in the first three months, maybe six months, if they have like some kind of a content plan in place where they're engaging their audience. But the biggest thing to keep in mind is like, like, it depends on what your goal is, I guess. It really depends on what your goal is. Like a lot of people are doing, um, like it's been trendy over the last few months for people to do those five day challenges and stuff like that. Like actually this whole last year, people were kind of doing those challenges that were free challenges to get people in. They do some kind of a pop-up launch. Um, those pop-up launch groups have been around for a while. They've changed the name of them mm -hmm. <laughs> to where last year it was the five day challenge. This year I'm starting to notice a trend on the big dogs where they're calling it boot camp and different things like that. And they're actually charging for it. It's not a free one. Anymore, so they changed the name so that people would stop thinking it's a free thing. Um, but, anyways, that being seen, um, or that being said, rather, <laughs> that being said, inside of groups, like whenever you're starting, you're going to have initial traction. And whenever I'm working with people, the goal that we're looking for is yes, we want that initial traction. Yes, we want that excitement in the beginning. But we also want to start putting in some principles right from the beginning that are built for longevity. We want to insert like some kind of a content plan or something that's going to draw people in that's going to be specific for that niche. And it's going to be different depending on what the niche of the market is. So, um, you know, if it's an e-commerce brand, 
they might want they might want it to be like a, around product reviews or like sharing like how you're enjoying your products or like talking about that it might be like hustle and bustle around this is the number one place to talk about your you know fashion do's and don'ts or whatever they might have something with that and i just was specifically going for clothing right there i don't know why but um <laughs> it could be anything um in in another one of like i already talked about the contractor group earlier um then there's a lot of things that we did there specifically for their group where we talked about like based on based on what their clients were engaged in and already doing what was going to be most beneficial for them even about like transitioning they do lives every single week so like transitioning that to podcasts because a lot of their a lot of their listeners or a lot of their active engagers are so busy on the job they'd love to have something to listen to while in the car not everybody's like that not every not every target audience is like that but that was what was specific for them um in another group where it was um it's the uh, oh my gosh healing healthcare burnout one of one of my other favorite clients from 2020 um in that group specifically we started talking about how a lot of these a lot of these doctors and nurses are involved in local like i, I don't want to say charity events but those local like 5k runs and stuff like that where they're doing it for cancer or they're doing it for leukemia or they're doing it for some other kind of thing like that um obviously with covid everything was shut down but we talked about what that would look like in the future and how people could actually represent healing healthcare burnout as part of the brand for that and so we started building up like that kind of energy inside of the group and allowing people a safe space to talk about burnout in the healthcare industry and stuff so it's just it's different for everybody but having that unique factor of like any time that they're feeling burned out they're going to come to the healing healthcare burnout group mm -hmm. um in our inside of our leader forge group for instance um we actually started building in a mechanism and we're we're working on getting this better in place i'm actually working with a partner on that so um keep in mind if you partner with anybody on a group it is going to take longer to implement and it's going to take longer to make decisions but i'm testing it out so that i can prove to you guys that it works great <laughs> But um, inside of that group, one of the things that we're doing is we're having it be a go to place for pe people to find like accountability partners um, for people to get like industry knowledge and just ask from other experts for people to step up as a leader and maybe find their own clients, find mentors, find collaborations. And so we're building it as a place that's a go to source for them. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. And I love it. I need to join. Um, is it a paid group? <laughs> No, nope, this one is not. This one is our free group. Um, we have we have other like paid um like we have a paid challenge right now called the Lead Gen Challenge. Um, we're actually going to be we have a few other projects in the works. I'm I I was like, am I going to announce one now? I don't know. Um, <laughs> anyways, um, in the Lead Gen Challenge, what we do with that that's only once a quarter, but that one's basically like a boot camp for somebody's lead gen, and so it's like 30 days where we give like set exercises that have worked 100% of the time. And what we're doing is like, we're noticing trends and we're noticing adaptations in the marketplace. So every single round of the challenge, we're giving new templates, we're giving new, and when I say templates, like new content templates, new outreach templates, new, um, new opt-in templates, new CTA templates. We're also building out lead magnets, like a handful. So five lead magnets every single time that people can take those lead magnets and build new lead magnets once a quarter. And so we're doing that every single round of the challenge based on what we're seeing trending in the market. Mm -hmm. And um, so that's like our, that's our paid one um, it, to be a part of that mastermind. And that is a mastermind. Yeah, but that sounds awesome. Honestly, with all the plug and play done for you, just that's delicious, amazing. So you were saying that you you guys are handing out the content planning and, and and you need to kind of have some kind of a strategy behind your group right so my question mm -hmm. would be um how complicated it is to maintain a group and do i need to hire people for that purpose or do can i do it by myself as an entrepreneur or do i need to have like a va or like a whole team who does all of that work for me so as an entrepreneur if you are providing free help for people you should be able to get free help yourself so if you if you have a free group which is the one that leads into something that's going to be paid it is really easy especially when we get down to that deep resonating reason to find volunteers to help out with traction and engagement and all of that inside of the group so there's there's no reason why 
you would have to have your own team. Um, in fact, one of my other clients, she's actually a cattle rancher from North Dakota. And um, she's amazing. She's amazing. If you guys ever want to check her out, um, her group is called Bull Stalkers. And her name is Tracy. And um, inside of her group, it was completely dead. It was completely dead, but she'd grown this group, all these cattle ranchers, and she didn't know what to do with it. And we started, we started kicking up traction inside of her group. I gave her a mechanism. It's, it's really easy. There's actually, I just posted the CTA the other day. I've never shared it outside of my clients before, but there's three core posts that are like the framework that we build our, our, you know, our future content plan off of, but it's three core posts that we do every single week. As long as you do these posts, it's like a faucet where you can turn on a lot of, a lot of leads coming to you. And then you can just turn it off again anytime. Um, but we did that inside of her group. And, um, one of the things, one of the things that we noticed was that there were a bunch of people inside of the group who were actually engaging and who were excited about it. And so she was able to just like pull volunteers from inside of the group, people who it was going to be mutually beneficial for them to show up and help because now they're also getting traction for their brand as well. And so, um, you know, she's really just created this whole community, um, gathering all of these people who are building up their ag legacy or agriculture legacy. Um, she's created this community where they can connect with each other and not not have to worry about things like the C word, you know, the evil C word that we're all facing right now, you know, or whatever, they don't have to worry about that. They're still able to connect online and she's showing them how to facilitate those online connections, which in the agriculture industry, um, most of them are still using newspapers to advertise. It's crazy. Wow. And so she's teaching them how to transition to the online world too. So yeah, it's like, it's mutually beneficial. Are you going to tell us those three content types? <laughs> on this no no if you want that you can opt in <laughs> okay i was just trying to maybe get it out of you but it's fine <laughs> i can give you i can give you one of the um it's trendy right now i will say that like when something trends people notice it trends and then um what i've seen is people take that trend and then they burn the fields with that trend. So with five day challenges, all these coaches and consultants saw that five day challenges were working. Everybody did five day challenges. And now like everybody thinks they know what a five day challenge is and what it does. Okay. Mm -hmm. So um, the same thing happens with this. And this is one of the top things that I tell people to use, and it's called viral questions, um, viral questions. If you have a really good one and it's one that somebody hasn't really engaged with before, or, or if it's something that it's just been a while since they engaged with one like that, people will engage with it because it's fun. It's entertaining. It's easy to answer. And um, it can help you get high visibility really fast. You go into a 40,000 member group, you drop a viral question. Um, all of a sudden you have like 100 to 300 comments. And it's like for people who have posted stuff before and then gotten crickets on their posts, they go post these viral questions. And suddenly it's like, wow, I'm popular. <laughs> You know, it's like going back to high school or something where you wanted to be popular or you wanted to be liked or whatever. And it's like, it's really not that hard to be the loudest and noisiest person in the room online. Of course, but when it comes to viral questions, it's different depending on the industry and the group you are posting. So it's not like a formula, but you kind of have to look at what's, you know, is it? I mean... <laughs> I don't know. Give me an example. We'll just no, like, I mean, fire I mean, off some right now of what would work. Fire up. Okay. I mean, if I am inside of the ClickFunnels group and I want to prop a viral question, then um, you're probably going to get it deleted by the ClickFunnels team unless it is relevant to the ClickFunnels group. Ask me how I know. Um, but you could know? say, because <laughs> it's happened. Um, you can't just post anything inside of there. Like mm -hmm. you can't just be like, are you a business owner? Or are you this? Because it's not really relevant. Um, mm -hmm. and, and like some admin teams are like, they're like, um, dictators. It's almost like, you know, they're, they're Hitler's running around telling everybody what they can and can't do inside of the group. Um, the flowers. I know. <laughs> Um, you know, some people want power for different reasons. Um, some people like, you know, like that power and they the like that control. I, I see that happen all the time. <laughs> so, um, inside of click funnels, for instance, I might do something like, um, you know, what's the best CRM I'm currently using X, you know, mm -hmm. something like that. So that I can like looking for recommendations currently using HubSpot, what CRM is your favorite? Mm-hmm. 
So there is like some kind of, a, it doesn't seem like a viral question, but it's just like, hey, you know, I'm using this. But yeah, it- people, people love sharing their opinion. <laughs> People love talking about themselves and their ideas. People love it. And it's not, it's not a negative thing. Like it's a positive thing. Like I'm going to get great feedback. Somebody else is going to come to that post. Somebody is going to save that post. Somebody is going to share that post, like that kind of stuff. Like people love recommendations and they love giving recommendations. Um, it's like, what's the best meal you've ever had at a restaurant? Is that a question Mm -hmm, to you? Oh my God. Um, a pizza at, uh, Jamie's Oliver's restaurant. Yeah. How easy was it for you to come up with that? I mean, I had to think about it for like two seconds. <laughs> yeah, for two but seconds, it but it was, easy. yeah. Yeah, was because easy. giving giving recommendations is extremely natural. It's like if you go to a restaurant or you go and you have an amazing experience somewhere, it's really easy to talk about it. People will share their favorite movie. They'll share their favorite books. They'll share their favorite restaurants all the time. It's really, really easy to talk about the things that we love. Mm -hmm. And so if you're asking for recommendations, that's also a viral question. People love giving recommendations. Wow. Thank you so much for that insight. Talking about books, speaking of books, um, you have written one, (laughs) not a sales book. It's not a sales book for sure. Um, As the title says, do you mind sharing a bit more about that? Yeah. Did you read it already? No. um, I just saw on (laughs) Amazon. (laughs) I mean, of course it's amazing. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> you're hilarious you don't have to tell um, stories uh, um it's it's a really quick read um it's one of the it's the first book I've ever written I haven't written I like I have a big book just waiting to be written I just haven't taken the time to do it that book I wrote in two days um wow. I yeah it I I was trying to I was a part of a challenge that was um to use AI to help you write your book um and and it, we were supposed to do it in a week. And I was working on my big book and I was like so excited because I was like, I'm going to get this book written. And when it got right down to it, like I wanted to do more research. I wanted to have more data inside my book. And I just like, it didn't settle with me. And so um, the book needed to be done by Wednesday at midnight. And it was Monday and I was freaking out. I was like, there's no way. So I woke up Tuesday morning and I was like, you know what? I'm just going to write something that I could riff on. That's completely easy and simple and doesn't address all the big ideas and principles. And it's not like, it's not something that's so deep for me. And so I wrote that book, um, in like, it's, it's, uh, not a sales book, just a highly profitable method for beating the algorithm. And it talks about actually having viral content. And the whole principle behind it is that when most people go to write content for their business, they're writing it specifically for their business's benefit, as opposed to writing it for the audience member's benefit. And that when you come at it from what the, what is your audience on the platform that you're serving at the time, what do they actually want to see? What do they want to engage with? What's trending right now that's interesting for them? You know, different things like that. So I talk about those concepts inside the book and um, it's like a quick read. I told you that before, but it's only like, like you could sit down and have that knocked out in a couple hours. So like, it's not a big deal. Um, and I also share a little bit about like um, some of my personal stories, some of the like struggles and things that I've had to overcome. And so it, it's a really great read. If you haven't read it yet, I definitely suggest you do. Um, I do have a free PDF download of it. Um, you could purchase the book on Amazon, but I also have a free PDF download. If you want that, just let me know. Yes, please. Thank you. I would love to have that. Um, yeah, I do know. I don't have. I think the Kindle edition was like for free, right? And um, the paperback was seven bucks or something. Uh, but I, I listen to books all the time. So I'm, I'm, I'm more of like a listener than a reader. <laughs> I know. I need, it, I need to get on that. <laughs> Can you narr- narrate that? It would be awesome. Just like narrate your own book. Oh my gosh. I should. I should. I should do story time with Sierra. Maybe yeah. that'll be my podcast. Yeah, maybe. That sounds really bad time stories or something like that. Yeah, sounds really good. Um, Sierra, there is a segment in my podcast which I haven't, <laughs> haven't used for a while, but it's, it's basically about the biggest fuck-ups in business. Mm. You can share in yours. <laughs> which one do we want to start I mean, with? I mean, um, this is just like <laughs> one that you feel comfortable sharing and um, is big enough to be mentioned. Yeah, so, mentioning. so I will say this. Um, I feel like to be successful, you have to make mistakes and you have to fail. Um, I feel like I have not met anyone who is extremely successful that has not 
to this day. I have not met anyone who has never had mistakes or failures that were big time. Um, so I want to give one that's relevant. So if I'm if I'm really thinking about one that's relevant, um, just from the last year, I'm going to say that it's I had like a really big month for me at the time. Um, it was a 50K month and I was super excited by that. And I started making spending decisions for my business based on the 50K month, thinking that, oh, cool. Now that I've hit this, this is my new floor. This is what I'm going to do all the time. It was not my new floor. It was still a ceiling for me. And I was making long-term decisions based off of temporary income. And so I actually ended up hiring a sales team to come in thinking like, cool, I just did all these sales. Now I'm going to go do fulfillment. I'm just going to hand this off to the sales team. And when I brought in the sales team, they actually couldn't sell shit. Like I thought I was going to bring in salespeople. I thought we did so good with hiring and they were going to come in and just like take over. I had to teach them everything. It was insane. And it was taking all of my time. So then I didn't have any time to really focus on my marketing. I didn't really have a ton of time to focus on my fulfillment. And so like everything started unraveling and kind of falling apart because I made a long-term decision based off of the temporary income. And so I would say, don't make long-term decisions off of temporary income. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's a great one. I just wanted to say you should have um, asked for Taylor and his sales team to jump in and help out. <laughs> <It's been laughs> sure, a, sure. Train your sales team for you type of, I think he's, he's, on, he's in this business right now, which is like, you know, training sales team, handing it over to people. So maybe that's could be a good one. Um, you also mentioned that you, um, you were speaking for Traffic and Funnels. Mm -hmm. What were you yeah. speaking about? Um, well, I've actually spoken on stage for traffic and funnels a few times now. Um, so the first couple of times they brought me on as a client testimonial to kind of share my journey and what it was like to go from, um, because like realistically, um, for years, I wasn't actually charging for what I did. I was like, I was just like the ultimate altruistic philanthropist who hoped that someday me just doing the good work that somebody would want to pay me. Um, that was a really dumb idea. I don't encourage people to do that. I, um, I jumped into client kit, uh, back in 2020, March of 2020 and started charging for my work. And the results that people got were significantly better <laughs> when they paid for it versus when it was free. Um, so that being said, um, the first couple of times that I was on stage, they brought me on stage to kind of talk about like the mindset behind things and to talk about like, what were some of the struggles that I went through um, when I was at different levels and facing those stages. Um, then the second time that they brought me in, they brought me in to speak to their elite group. And I spoke on Facebook groups and what, what was needed for foundations for Facebook groups and what makes a great and highly engaged group. Um, the next time that I came in, they brought me in, I taught on content creation. And um, from what I can tell, I think that they're actually using my, my training on content creation inside of client kit now as one of the trainings to help out their client kit crew. So are they, are they paying you, paying you a royalty for that or something? Nope. No. <laughs> nope. I came in, I came in as a guest for their mm -hmm. elite team. And anytime anyone comes in as a guest, they use that, they use that stuff. Mm -hmm. um, so they are not, they are not, there are other JV partnerships I have elsewhere that pay me for good. all of that kind of ideas and stuff. So Very good. Awesome. Awesome to hear that. Um, there's something I wanted to ask you when you were talking about that you've been doing this since you were 14. So that's very natural for you to build communities, right? And since you're helping at entrepreneurs doing the same online, um, do you think that there is a special set of charisma or something that you come that is comes so natural for you? And is this something that is replicable for someone who is like, for me, I hated groups. I, I, I've never been a group leader. I've just been silent and just very shy to speak up. Now that I have my platform, I'm much more expressive. But do you think that is this something that anyone can learn as a skill? Or is this something that you kind of need to be well, so Tracy, my, my cattle rancher, she is 100% introvert. You know, she's a cattle rancher. She spends most of her time with the cows and mm -hmm. her dogs and the horses. And, um, she's 100% an introvert. Um, but she started noticing in the cattle industry, like for her, like, again, going back to that deep resonating reason, we got right down to it. And she started noticing that she was tired of 
watching these ranches have to sell their ranch because they couldn't afford to keep their doors open because they didn't know how to market online and they couldn't switch with the shift in the market. And it was just like crushing her to watch these ranches that have been in families for generations, like multiple generations, this ranch has been in a family and then they have to sell it because they just can't afford it. They can't afford it anymore. They're actually having to go out, like most ranchers go out and get loans so that they can purchase what they need and then they sell and then they pay off their loan and have some left over for them. And it's just crazy to think about that, like the ranching industry could go away entirely if somebody doesn't do something. And so for her, like nobody else was doing anything about it and somebody had to step up. And so she did. Mm -hmm. And, um, and I'm so proud of her for doing that and everything that she's done. She's actually, um, like since I've worked with her and she's come back around as a client multiple times, like I've worked with her multiple times now, but since I've worked with her, she's actually been, she's become like the head of one of the magazines. She's also been featured on, um, one of the top known, um, like events that they do where they have guest speakers come in for all of the different ranchers across America. Um, she's been one of the speakers at that and actually has like a webinar built off of that and gets clients from that now. Wow. Um, she's also been featured on the news um, for everything that she's doing. And she's been, she's just getting all this notoriety and it's, she still gets to be her introvert self and she gets to come out like even right now, like this podcast, once you share it, is going to be out there for whoever to go download lots and lots of people, but it's just you and me talking. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. not, it's not a super big deal. It's just you and me. And so it's like introverts can still do really, really well with it. And I, mm -hmm. I know that that's not the question you asked, but I feel like that's the answer that was needed. Um, mm -hmm. Anyone can do this. It's like, it's not, I am an extrovert and I needed this. <laughs> I still like, I want to, I want to have a big YouTube channel. I want to have a big following. Um, it's my intention to reach the masses. I don't just want my voice. Like I, I was for so long, I was helping just one person at a time when I was younger, um, where I'd sit down and I'd go through all the principles that I now teach a mass audience, but I'd sit down and I'd teach them one principle. They'd go out and they'd make changes in their life. And I'd be so excited for them. Mm -hmm. And then, um, and then I'd realize that like, there was a deficit on my side mm -hmm. where I wasn't receiving back, um, the amount that they were receiving on their side. And so it just like, it wasn't an even scale. It wasn't an even balance when I was just mm -hmm. helping one person at a time. And I started recognizing that like, if I want to be able to help more people, one of the best ways I can do that is to actually help people who are helping other people so that it's like that whole pay it forward effect. Like if I help one coach, they're going to go out and help hundreds or thousands of people. Mm -hmm. And so that's why, that's why I started shifting to helping coaches and consultants and agency owners and freelancers and stuff like that. People who are actually reaching the masses. Mm -hmm. And, um, and again, it's just one of those things where it's like, I don't want to I'm no longer at the point where I just want to like touch a few lives. Mm -hmm. I actually want to change cities. I want to change nations. I want to make those big moves. And I, I feel like I'm starting to surround myself with other people who are kind of in the same vein, if that makes sense. Yeah, that makes sense. I think you're looking for impact, like maximum impact and just like significance overall that, you know, your life had meaning and you managed to impact people on a larger scale. I think that's amazing. And I think some of us do have those desires to just, just like you said, it's a ripple effect, right? When you help someone, that's also helping someone. So it's just like, even indirectly, you manage to get your influence out there and your whatever you're teaching to someone. So that's amazing. So I, I, I cannot wait to see the future, what the future holds for you. I'm very excited. Yeah, so, so what is, what's your plan? Like, What's your, what, what, how do you see yourself in the future? Like obviously growing what you're doing in a larger scale. You talked about a YouTube channel, like just tell me <laughs> what, what you're looking for in the future. Um, so I've actually got a plan in place um, for the first, for the first time. I feel like uh, my plan is actually executable, which is pretty cool. Like it's actually doable. There's uh, one of my favorite speakers when I was, you know, in the last few years has been Les Brown. And there's this one segment where he's talking and he's just like letting people know that like, cause a lot of times people just give up on their dreams or they just give up on things ever changing because they just don't believe that it can happen. 
And he was like, all you have to do, he's like, you don't have to, you know, they have those I am statements that you build, like where it's like, I am this. And then in the back of your mind, you're like, I'm not that. That's not who I am. Like, that's not real because reality doesn't show you that. And your mind knows better and your subconscious knows better. But he's like shifted instead of I am just say it's possible. And it's one of those things where it's like, I now believe that these things are possible. So um, with my YouTube channel, my intention is to actually utilize music to help teach principles and to wow. help um, to help people better understand. Cause that's kind of how we, that's kind of how most people emote is through music. You know, we utilize music to help us feel our emotions better and to help us like deal with certain things. Like it's like, you get upset, you turn on a certain song, you know, you get really happy. You turn on one of your favorite songs, you know, you're sad, you go turn on a certain type of music because it helps you process emotions. And so I want to utilize music to help teach principles that are really solid foundations. So I'm actually going to be doing parody songs that are kind of funny and entertaining, um, taking some of the popular songs that are out there and um, turning it around for, you know, some of the things like spammy messages on Facebook that everybody that's, gets. Or... <laughs> that's like entertaining and educational. That's like infotainment on steroids, basically. That's yeah. super nice. And also you have to understand like, I did a special course on how to create a YouTube channel. And the, one of the things that you're talking about is that uniqueness that you have to kind of mix and like put things together and just like create something that's original, that's new. And just, I think your idea is, is like that. So I cannot wait yeah. to see that. <laughs> me too. Me too. I'm so excited. Um, like for, for a year and a half, when I launched this business, um, I went live every single Tuesday on my Facebook profile. I did, I only missed like three out of an entire year and a half. And wow. so, um, I would sing at the beginning of every single live and, um, and it, sometimes it was amazing and sometimes it was terrible and it was all Facebook live. So I can't take any of it back. Um, <laughs> it's all good. just out there for <laughs> everybody to see to do that. I, I have to, I have to go back to those lives and just check that, but do you actually like to sing or <laughs> is it something that yeah. you always wanted to pursue? perhaps? Uh, yeah, no, um, I wanted to, so this was, this goes back to a, a story whenever, um, whenever I was, you know, I have five kids and I always tell my kids, you know, that they can, and I, okay. I always tell my kids that they can do and be whatever they want, as long as they pursue it with all their might. But there was this one time I was telling them that, and this was after, um, I don't know if you know the story of my son, but, um, my 13 year old, when he, when he was 11, we found out that he had a brain tumor whenever he started having seizures and stuff like that. Um, anyways, all healed, all better on the flip side of that. So like no, no sad things happening there, but it was during the time when he was taking certain medications that like he was, he was really struggling with depression. Um, he'd actually gotten second and third degree burns on his hands during one of his seizures when he was cooking in the kitchen. Huh. And, um, so he, he like, couldn't do any of the stuff that a normal 11 year old could do. He lost all of his friends during that time. He was stuck inside, couldn't go anywhere. Cause we didn't know when he might have a seizure. Um, and we really didn't know what was going on. And so, um, I would be like the motivational speaker for him because my husband was working full time. I was there with the kids all day and I just like quit everything in my life. I'd actually gone through Tony Robbins and Dean Graziosi's, um, it was called the knowledge business blueprint. Now it's called self-education revolution. Um, but I'd gone through their program. I tried it. I was not one of their success stories. Like, let's just be real. Like we all make mistakes, right? <laughs> Um, and their program's good. I actually pulled a lot of really great things from it, but I just didn't make money from it um, mm -hmm. because I had a lot of gaps that their program didn't fill. Mm -hmm. And anyways, I gave up on it and I just stopped everything for like two months of my life. And I was just being that motivational speaker all the time, then going in my closet and crying, coming back out, being motivational speaker again. Yeah. <laughs> and um, I came out and I said that phrase, you know, that you can do and be whatever you want in life. You just have to pursue it with all your might. And then it hit me like a ton of bricks that I was not doing that myself. Mm -hmm. And when I recognized that, I was like, I was like, damn, like I, I gave up on some of my dreams because I was a mom, you know, or because I was a wife or because like my husband joined the military or whatever. Or I thought that I couldn't do it anymore. And, um, and I just like, was like, this is dumb. Like I'm going to do, I'm going to pursue my dreams and show my kids firsthand and be that firsthand example for them and show them that it's possible to have lived for, you know, however many years and then go out and just make it happen 
mm-hmm. at the at the flip of a switch, you know? And um, that's one of the things that I try to teach my clients too, is like, it's like, just because you've never had your voice heard before, and just because you've never had high visibility before, and just because you've never had a massive audience before, doesn't mean you can't have one now. Mm-hmm. You just need to have the principles that somebody else has done and executed really well. And you know that they work and go out and do them for yourself and boom, you can have it too. Like, um, so my first six months in this business, I hit hundred K in that first six months. I'd never made that much money in a year in my entire life. And that was the first time. And so if, for me, it happened later in life. Now I'm like, I'm I'm friends with like 18 and 20 year olds who are doing more than that, (laughs) you know, but it's one of those things where I feel like I'm changing the next generation. So my kids are going to be able to have this from the time that they're young and in a way that I never did. So I'm breaking, like, it's almost like breaking old generational curses or something like that. Like I'm changing the future for my kids and for my family. Yeah. And I love that you do that. And honestly, you're such a light, like your energy is just so infectious. It's just, even that really comes through to your Facebook profile. Like you are such a light. You are really there to raise the mood. And I think even being around that energy of yours, even through your Facebook lives or just your profile, like even now, it's very, very clear to me that you are just meant to do what you're doing right now. Just like, so I'm, I'm so, so happy to have you in this podcast and had, had this conversation with you, Sierra. Um, before you go, can you just tell the audience, um, how can they find you? Um, do you have a program that you can help them with? And who is this for exactly? Just like those contact informations yeah. before we wrap up. Yeah. So um, right now my friends list is not maxed out. It will probably be maxed out pretty soon on Facebook. Um, LinkedIn has a much higher rate on there, but I'm going to be honest. I have, I have a team who runs my LinkedIn. (laughs) So best way to connect with me personally, uh, one-to-one is going to be on my Facebook profile, Sierra Lewick. Um, That's C-I-E-R-R-A-L-U-E-C-K. And, um, and then you can also jump into our Facebook group. Uh, we're about to launch a new Facebook group. Um, I don't have it released yet. So if you want to find it, you can come check out my profile, which I have set to public so that people can see stuff on there. So you'll be able to find that information there. Um, but our Facebook group that we have right now is Leader Forge, and that's L-E-A-D-E-R and then F-O-R-G-E. <laughs> <laughs> for anyone yeah. listening, um, Leader Forge, um, you can join that group. Uh, as far as program, we're actually, uh, so the next time that we're going to be doing the Lead Gen Challenge, we do it uh, four times a year. So the, that one is wrapping up right now. Um, we do them in January, April, in October. Is that right? No, no, no. Yes. October is the fourth one, though. The third one is going to be in July. <laughs> Sorry, trying to remember the months off the top of my head, but um, so January, April, July, and October. The next one is in April because right yes. now you. So that's that's the most important information. I think the yeah, the, just like when is the next yeah. one for those who want to. I jump. just didn't know. I just didn't know when the podcast episode was going to release, so I thought I'd just throw <laughs> out when they are. Um, no, but yeah, gonna, so it's going to be out next week probably. So don't worry about okay, it. Okay, cool, cool, still. cool. And then um, if people want to work, um more one-to-one and they want to get that one-to-one feedback. I I've been letting people know that we're actually going to be backing off a little bit on the one-to-one side this Mm -hmm. year where I'm going to take less one-to-one clients and I'm going to be going more towards, um, I'm starting some, some, you know, monthly mastermind offers where we'll be doing like different levels based on where you're at with your group. You can jump into one of those masterminds and, um, and, and then we'll actually be doing workshops. We'll be doing live trainings. We'll be having special guests come in and do guest speakers based on whatever topic we're working on right then. And then also AMAs inside of the mastermind. So you'll be able to have trainings, courses, templates, all of that specifically geared towards whatever stage you're at for your group. Um, we're going to just kick that off. It's either going to happen in February or March. So keep an eye out. Um, if you want to jump in the next round of the lead gen challenge, that's in April. And if you want more one-to-one help, reach out to me and I'll make sure that we get you scheduled to have a consultation to see if that's going to be what's best for you right now. Cause my, my goal is to help people wherever they're at. Um, again, it took me forever. It took me forever to get to the point that I'm at. And I don't want it to have to take people a decade or two decades to get there. I want them to be able to 
see like what seems to everybody else like an overnight success. Like I want people to be able to see success very quickly and I don't want it to take forever for people to find the experts that they need.